Hello, I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wall, who's been nicknamed the Blood Detective, for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. Dr. Wall also has several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. Now, Dr. Wall, we have some questions that people have sent us through email on today's topic of sure. cancer and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Margie has breast cancer and would like to know the best diet and nutrients to take for this. She okay. feels that her doctor, her, her cancer doctor, okay. does not believe or understand nutrition, but to Margie it just makes sense to improve her overall nutrition. Okay. She would like to know what you think about cancer and nutrition. Okay, well, um, again, this is a condition that we're dealing with a lot uh, in our office. Uh, people will see us that uh, do not want uh, chemotherapy or radiation, and we support them nutritionally. Of course, nutrition in the form of diet and supplements or intravenous nutrition, these are not approved treatments for cancer. They're adjuncts. They're add-ons. Then there is, uh, so, and you know, in Margie's case, first of all, Margie, I'm, I'm sorry to, to hear about this, and I'm sorry for, for the uh, confusion and upset that might, you know, have resulted from your relationship with your oncologist, which is your, your cancer doctor, but should be needless to say, there's lots of uh, science out there that, that shows definitively that when nutrition is used right for a variety of cancers, and, and particularly in breast cancer, it can improve uh, what they call medical outcome, which is the... Uh, sterilized way of saying can help a person live longer and have more successful treatment. There's all sorts of controversy about whether or not someone, if they take nutritional supplements, if they're feeding their cancer. You know, that, mm -hmm. that sounds reasonable, except it's been entirely disproven. And on our website, we have some of the references to the studies that point to that. Now, in all fairness, there are some cases where certain nutrients, whether they're vitamins, minerals, or herbs, should not be used with certain um, uh, chemotherapy drugs, for example. We might want to time the use of nutrients a little differently around radiation. But overall, we know that it's of a, uh, to a person's benefit to improve their general nutrition, of course, in terms of what they're eating, but to take nutritional supplements. Um, in uh, Margie's case... Uh, your doctor is uh, certainly untrained uh, in nutrition because if he or she was, then that couldn't be said because there are many symposium seminars all over the United States and, 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 and abroad where oncologists uh, and other doctors uh, go to and they, they learn about nutrition. But this is the sort of response that we would get and we automatically know that the doctor is just not, not their area. Sure. So we know everyone means well and all that, but in, in the case of uh, cancer, particularly breast cancer, and depending on, uh, we don't know, you know the stage of Margie's cancer, mm -hmm. but nutrition is, um, can do a few very, very important things. Number one, we must realize that most people do not die of their cancer. They succumb to infections and secondary malnutrition. Mm -hmm. Those are two things that nutrition is made to manage. So that nutrition may go beyond the diet because when we have a cancerous process, our body would need a level of nutrition that we couldn't possibly eat. And depending on your cancer and what therapies you're going through, you may not be able to improve your diet much at all. You just don't have any appetite. Mm -hmm. But nutrition and supplementation can improve upon that. Sometimes we use intravenous nutrition, like intravenous vitamin C, or we use vitamin shots. But um, uh, we know that nutrition, uh, improved nutrition, can improve the outcome, reduce uh, the risk of malnutrition, as I said, and secondary infections. And as we spoke about in our other like nutrition interview, we know that there are certain types of chemotherapy that work much better when you combine nutrition, when you combine nutrition with it, whether it's from diet and or nutritional supplements. But the supplements specifically have, have been studied. So there are some really good examples of synergism. Mm -hmm. And then there are a couple of examples of, you know, there are certain nutrients you do not want to combine with certain nutrients. So this depends on the cancer, what what uh, chemotherapy is, is being used. So Margie, you need to speak with someone uh, in your local area, if this is an area you're interested in improving your nutrition, that knows about nutrition, uh, drug, uh, chemotherapy interactions. But cert certainly the evidence is there. So now, I would think that the dehydrated yeah. powders that we were talking about in our other interview would be a good source of nutrition for someone who is a cancer patient yeah. and not able to eat. 
Yeah, Cassie, one of the, the, the most important supplements that I have is a dehydrated um, vegetable and fruit product where, you know, one or two scoops would contain the nutrition that you might have in dozens of pieces of fruits and vegetables. Now, I'm not saying that these dehydrated powers powders are the equivalent mm -hmm. of fresh fruits and vegetables. I'm just saying that they are made from fruits and vegetables and it makes sense to me that dehydrated amounts allow us in a, in a drink to get a huge amount of nutrition that in a person who has loss of appetite is obviously very, very key. Mm -hmm. We want nutrient, nutrition dense foods. Most oncologists might say something like, eat whatever you like. And some of you watching this now are saying, yeah, how do you know that? Well, that's, that's what they do, particularly if they're not really knowing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is appropriate. But uh, if we know that certain diets can benefit a person with different types of cancers differently. So we always want to pay attention to the details of the diet and never just go with, you know, just eat whatever you want, just for the sake of putting weight on a person. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that a cancer patient maintains lean organ muscle. The better their organ muscle composition, the better they will do. Okay. So we always measure what are called uh, body composition tests on all of our mm -hmm. patients, and then we, we tell the diet relative to that. Okay, okay, fantastic. So I think we've answered that question as much as we can, and there's more information on the website. The information is given at the beginning or end of this video. Thank you.